Hello, and welcome to Rock Your Block, where we highlight individuals who are making an impact in our community. I'm your host, Larry Laws. In April, we commemorate the 55th anniversary of the passage of the Fair Housing Act, the landmark civil rights law signed by President Lyndon B. Johnson on April 11, 1968, that made discrimination in housing transactions unlawful. The Fair Housing Act provides and prohibits discrimination in housing because of race, color, national origin, religion, sex, including gender, identity, and sexual orientation, disability, and familiar status. On today's segment of First Home Alliance, we honor and highlight an exceptional guest, Anne-Marie Robert, French-born. Anne-Marie moved to the United States to study at the University of South Carolina. She relocated to Northern Virginia region in 1999, and she has been employed in the real estate industry ever since. I'm proud to have her here today to share with us how she's rocking the block. Please welcome to our show, Anne-Marie Robert. Right. Anne-Marie, thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, that is great. That is great. Well, we're going to get right into it. I want you to just tell our audience a little bit about you. Sure. So I actually was born in Vietnam. So uh, my family immigrated to France when I was an infant. And so I grew up in, uh, in I didn't grow up in Vietnam, but mm -hmm. I um, stayed in France for about 15 years. Okay. <laughs> and um, my parents actually still live there. And um, I came here in the U.S. as an exchange student. And it was in high school. And I basically told my mom, I like it so much <laughs> that I did not want to go back. Okay. <laughs> so I decided to finish my studies here. I went to University of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And after graduating from school, then I came to this area in uh, Northern Virginia. And I've been here since. Well, that's great. Do you get the opportunity to, uh, to travel back to France? I do. So, um, actually, my husband proposed when we were in Paris last time. That's great. <laughs> and um, I, you know, I do try to go see my parents like once in a while. It's hard to um, travel now that we have a child, but you know, um, we definitely plan on going back soon. Yes, well, that's great. And, you know, uh, the month of April, we uh, commemorate the uh, signing of the Fair Housing Act. And so uh, what led you to go into the, uh, the uh, real estate and housing arena? Actually, it kind of came um, as uh, an opportunity to work with a real estate company. I was an admin. Mm -hmm. um, after graduation, I um, was kind of... I wanted to become a physical therapist, but uh, it was really hard at the time to um, get into the schools and um, very expensive. Yes. So I thought that I would start um, working and learn about the real estate market just to see how it went. And um, I've been in it ever since. So I had an opportunity to start working for a title company, uh, which was Advantage Settlement. Yes. And I was uh, 21 years ago, 2001 <laughs> is when we started, and um, I we just were really busy and mm -hmm. we really um, did really well, and so I've been in it ever since. Yes, well, that's great. Yeah, well, what are some of the things I want our audience to get to know uh, who you are? You know, I understand uh, you have a daughter, and uh, tell me about some of the uh, things you like to do with her. Yeah, so I have a 10-year-old daughter, and she is, of course, the light of our lives. She is really involved in ice skating. She's in a synchronized skating team called DC Edge. Um, she swims four times a week, and she also does Taekwondo. So she is a brown stripe belt right now, and she's working towards her black belt. That's great. Yes. That, that is great. <laughs> uh, have she had an opportunity to, to travel back to Vietnam? No, she hasn't. This is okay. something that we have been planning. We wanted to wait until she's a little bit older because mm -hmm. um, we want her to really um, appreciate the country. And um, we didn't want her to um, go there and, and not really fully um, appreciate it because, you know, it is so hot over there. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, we want her, you know, I heard a lot of people when they go back and the kids are so young and they're always hot, but they, they don't want to be outside. And <laughs> it's so. miserable. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, 
but yeah, we we're planning on going hopefully within the next couple of years. Okay, and have you been back yourself? I have. So yes. when I was young, of course, my grandparents were still alive, and I used to go back every couple of years yes. just to visit them. But unfortunately, they both passed away, and so I haven't been back since. But um, I really miss it. The mm -hmm. food there is amazing. The people are really charming, and of course, it's um, the beaches are beautiful. So I yes. can't wait to go back. Okay. Now, with that, your experiences in Vietnam and France, how did that uh, uh, play into uh, your studies when you went to school? So um, the languages, obviously, were very easy to me. Um, I grew up in a household where we spoke some Vietnamese, but French was my main language. Um, and coming... It, well, actually, during school, I learned English as a very young age, too. So I did speak several languages very early on. And so during my studies, um, languages were really easy, too. I also learned German when I was um, in uh, mi middle school, I believe. Yes. So um, I took four years of German and all through high school. Okay. So um, I think languages definitely helped me and um, kind of opened my horizon to different um, ethnicities and countries. Yes. And so how many languages do you speak now? So fluently, I would say two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I speak English and French fluently. Uh, Vietnamese is semi-fluent. I can definitely get by. Um, if I go to Vietnam, I can talk to people. But um, it's with the very technical terms, uh, it's a little bit harder. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then with German, um, I can have a small conversation, but okay. just obviously, you know. Probably a lot better than me. I can just ask, where's the Bonhoff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> where's the Bonhoff? Yeah. And so how's that uh, with your daughter? Has she been able to pick up any uh, additional languages? So what we did early on is put her in Spanish immersion classes. Mm -hmm. And right now she is going to Spanish immersion um, elementary school. And Great. so we wanted to get her um, exposed to languages really early on as well. Yes. Because um, we, I just believe that languages really promotes the future and, you know, everything when you, you grow up. So. Yeah. Yes. And so I uh, see so you have her in a lot, and it's Boy Scouts that she's in. It was, uh, it was really amazing. I know they uh, changed a few years ago. Yes. And now you actually have girls in Boy Scouts. Correct. And uh, yes, and tell me a little about the things that she's doing. There. Right. And I'm really excited to talk about scouting because it definitely is um, great for young kids to learn about life skills. And um, they do so much as a you know, as a den, as a troop, but also they do a lot for the community. And mm -hmm. so 2019 is when they started um, accepting girls. And so we kind of jumped on the bandwagon and took the opportunity to bring this um, really cool um, group of girls. There's about five of them and um, they have loved it. And so it really helps them to become leaders, I feel. And they can see that they can that anything they can do regardless of gender. Right. So um, we do a lot of things. Community service is one of the big things that we do. We've gone um, painting barriers at the Jefferson Memorial. It was kind of a nationwide um, community outreach. Mm -hmm. We have gone um, camping and we clean up, uh, pick up trash everywhere we go. We write letters to servicemen overseas, That's like um, you know, for Christmas, yes. uh, or we do. Um, uh, sometimes we go decorate homes, like for the elderly, so it makes it a little bit festive for Christmas. Yes. So we do a lot of things, and it's really great for little girls to to learn those life skills and be part of a community. That's great. That's great. I think it's very important. Uh, but I heard you mention like uh, housing in there. And so you also do some other community work with the Habitat. Is that correct? Yes. So I have been a member of a team for Habitat for Humanity. And it's mainly women that get together to fundraise money. And um, it's actually for the Maryland chapter. Okay. And we get together once a year and uh, help build homes for its affordable housing and um, for families in need. And so we also 
we have a lot of fun during that day, but we also learn skills on our own. So we use power tools. They taught us how to put um, fence posts or frame homes. So mm -hmm. it's really fun, yes. actually. Yes. <laughs> I know, and you are a very busy person. I mean, you are, you're very active in the community and you do a lot. And uh, you know, the, the following month is the Asian American Heritage Month. And so I uh, understand that you, um, uh, you, do you know a little bit about the organization, the Asian Real Estate Association? Yes, yeah, so I have um, some friends that actually are um, volunteering and on the board of that um, association. And so I'm looking forward to be more involved with them to get to know the members and participate in their events. So they do, um, I know that they're doing a cherry blossom photo shoot coming up. Right and they have galas and expos um, and just to kind of outreach to the community and support our Asian partners. There's a lot of realtors and loan officers and I think it's great. And yeah, I love um, the Asian Heritage Month because mm -hmm. it really gives an opportunity for us to support each other. Yes. And not only that, but also teach um, the younger generation about our traditions and our values and you know, I think we have such a big Asian community in this area, so it's it's great for young kids to learn from our yeah. background. Yes, and so how did this, uh, from what you are uh, studying in school into the profession that you're working now, <laughs> how did you transition into that? It was a, actually, you know, I don't feel like you really need a, um, education to become a realtor or a title agent. Um, but school for me was definitely um, something that helped me become um, more self-confident. And so coming into this um, industry, it basically, I try to learn as much as possible, and but learn from my peers. And so we do take some training and I'm still learning actually. So. <laughs> and yes. oh, I'm always taking like webinars and learning from other people just to make, you know, our organization better. Yes. Well, I think you'll, you're moving at light speed, you know, a lot quicker than uh, others that have, you know, started an industry and you're doing a great job. And so when we come back, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about what you're doing now in the, uh, in the title industry. Okay. All right. Thank you. We're about to take a short break. But before we go, I would like to remind you that First Home Alliance is a HUD-approved housing counseling agency serving the national capital area. If you're a first-time home buyer or a homeowner in need of mortgage assistance, please visit the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development website to find a HUD-approved agency in your area. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned. I'm with First Home Alliance. A little bit about First Home Alliance. We are a HUD-approved housing counseling agency that was established in 2002 by our executive director, Larry Law. He established the nonprofit. He established it because his mother purchased her first home at the age of 65. And everyone was like, how did you do that? Because her income was really low. And so that's how he found out about the USDA program. And so through the USDA program, his mother was able to purchase her first home. It intrigued him to see how he could help individuals basically experience the American dream of home ownership. So he established the nonprofit. Mission is to increase uh, home ownership to low to moderate income families. And so what does First Home Alliance do? Welcome back. You're watching Rock Your Block, and I'm your host, Larry Laws of First Home Alliance. And if you're just now tuning in, we're joined today with Anne Marie Robert. And before the break, we was uh, getting ready to talk about that, that company that you've been running, um, uh, Advantage Settlement. Uh, tell us a little bit how you got started. Yes, so I actually started um, as a settlement a, um, processor, and um, I was the operations manager for the um, for the office. So we actually are a very small um, office. We have about four to five um, workers, um, and we, you know, we basically do uh, settlement 
uh, for refinances, purchases, and sales. And um, we started out at the very beginning 21 years ago. <laughs> and and um, at 2018, my partner Christy and I took over the business. And so we were very excited because um, this was our dream from a long time ago, you know. And as an immigrant, it's, you know, either owning a company and owning a home is the two things that you want to do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so uh, with your uh, uh, view of ownership, you know, how was that uh, you're able to um, meet the right partner that can, you know, go into business with you? Yeah, so Christy and I, she actually worked uh, with Advantage for several years um, in and out of the company. And she is a quick learner. She's probably one of the quickest learners that I've ever met. Um, and I always said that from the beginning mm -hmm. when I first met her. She started out as um, an admin person in my company and so moved her way up. And um, actually, when she left our office, so she was um, directing another office. And then when she came back, we were like, you know, two peas in a pod and worked really well together. So um, when the opportunity came along, we decided to go um, together with us. And we have both our strengths and our weaknesses, and I think our strengths really complement each other. That's great. And so, uh, that, and so we go through the home buying process, and, um, and I would like to say thank you for what you're doing in the community with working with partners that being one of the partners of First Home Alliance. And so uh, how important it is for education? I love to educate people, and that's one of my passion. And, you know, I remember the first time that you <laughs> um, came to my office and suggested that I did that. And I, at first, was a little skeptical. I was like, I'm <laughs> just not sure if I can really do that. And so um, ever since then, I... I've been so happy because it, to me it's very rewarding to see that people are able to learn about um, the whole process yes. and actually go through with it and end up buying a home. And it's so rewarding to me to see that. And so for me, uh, I find it very passionate to educate people, but not just that, but making it very easy for them, um, make it more comfortable. Um, yes. Because I feel like sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating with all the legal terms. Um, and so I love to make it simple for them and um, more comfortable. Yes, and I can recall now since you said that that was about, well, about at least three years ago. Yes. Living with other. And the uh, homeowner at that time had had a difficult uh, trans uh, journey to homeownership. Uh, and so, uh, because of our partners, you know, the partner there to, to bring them to the closing, but uh, they nearly lost that home because of uh, the loan type that uh, wasn't the right one for them. So wow. it had to come out of a different loan. But to get there and have a, a settlement agent, you know, a title company that was able to calm everything down and uh, make them feel really good. How pleasing is that to see a homeowner, to, you know, to get to, to home base? Uh, there. Yes, so my favorite part, obviously, of the journey is the closing because when I explain to people um, the loan documents and it could be very daunting because obviously you're signing like hundreds of papers and a lot of times you don't know what it means or um, the implications of it all. But, um, you know, I try to make it as simple as possible um, for them to understand what the document says and in layman terms mm -hmm. and you know um just kind of make them feel comfortable about the process and you know signing 100 documents is not easy <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but in the end you know when i see their faces and they're so happy and they understand what they're doing and how to stay in their home i think it's just really really re rewarding yes. for me if you can touch a little bit on some things that you touch on in the class in reference to um the homeowner's title you know, uh, we know that the lenders is required, you know, they, they, they're they going to get their coverage. Mm -hmm. You know, explain to the audience a little bit yeah, about so that. Yeah, so title insurance yes. is one big part of our um, of our job is to make sure um, we search title to make sure title is clear. And um, we sell title insurance to um, help um, have the buyer's peace of mind. 
basically that's the whole point um, is to make sure that they're able to refinance sell their homes without having any issues in the future so um, basically you know we always tell them and people always ask me do I need title insurance and of course I would say you know the lender never wants to um, lend you money without getting title insurance for themselves right. so I would never suggest someone to buy a home without buying title insurance because um, that is the one thing that you can pay to make sure that your investment is good because um, you're spending a lot of money on a home. This is True. a big investment and so peace of mind is the number one thing. So you pay a one-time fee and it's good for the whole time that you own the house. Correct. And how important it is to maybe uh, talk about how you're going to hold that title before the closing date? Yeah, so I always tell people to make sure that the tenancy is, um, is important. So if you're holding title with other people, you want to know how you're going to hold title. With joint tenants, with the rights of survivorship, mm -hmm. or if you're going to hold as tenants in common, uh, if people want to do percentage ownership, or if you're... Um, husband and wife, so you're going to hold title as tenants by the entirety, and of course if you're by yourself. And people always ask a lot of questions about trust, how you know if people, if they should hold title in a trust. So, you know, um, it's really important to learn that uh, ahead of time. And for the first time home buyers, you know, we go through all that and they ask a lot of questions on it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is great. That's great. Now, I understand that uh, there's been some updates to your, your website. Yes. Yeah, uh, so. I mean, since we took over the business in 2018, we've been hard at work at improving our image. So we did a new logo. We have brand new colors. We actually remodeled our office. Right. And um, yeah, we worked on our, um, our website and we just recently launched it. It was a long process. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, what about your, your other community partners, you know, uh, uh, t uh, working with the real estate agents and the lenders? How important it is to, to have those partners? Yes, I mean, we like to work as a team. Obviously, teamwork is very important to us. And so with realtors and loan officers, um, we like to work not just during the closing, but even before, just to make sure, you know, sometimes people ask us to do title search in advance, just to make mm -hmm. sure title is clean, especially for auctions, short sales, or things like that. Um, or people like to make sure that they have no judgments before they sell the property. Um, but during the whole process, working together as a team is very important. We need to stay on top with communication, and especially um, with the buyers, the realtors, loan officers, everybody needs to talk together. That's great. And so uh, great community partners. And so some, tell me some of the things that, uh, you know, how people can get more information and what are you doing to market uh, the settlement company? Yes, yeah, so um, our website is the best place to start. Um, Advantage Settlement, www.advantagesettlement.com. Uh, is our website and you can find all of our uh, social media uh, links on there as well. And so we have recently just started doing social media. So okay. we try to um, give people pointers about um, title insurance and um, you know, the, we post videos on um, how to learn about uh, RON closings and um, the wire frauds that's been going on. So we try to get people um, educated about uh, the news um, for the industry. Okay. Well, I want to uh, say thank you for coming in today, uh, and I would like to bring you back and uh, give us an update on sure, what you're doing. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. It was really nice. All right. Great. I hope you enjoyed this interview and time spent with Anne Marie Robert. It has been an honor to recognize her accomplishments. If you would like more information about Anne, you can visit her website below. Now it's time to check our inbox and see how we can help rock your block. This is where we share recent questions sent to us from you, our viewing audience, about financial stability and housing. Today's question comes from Springfield, Virginia. I'm a homeowner. I was in a COVID-19 forbearance, but it has ended. I was offered a repayment plan by my mortgage company, by my mortgage company, but the monthly payments are too high. I need your assistance. Can you help? I want to say thank you for contacting First Home Alliance for that answer for that question. And yes, we can help. Uh, First Home Alliance since 2008 has helped over 3,000 homeowners maintain their home and avoid 
uh, foreclosure, coming up with alternatives to uh, foreclosure, keeping most of them at home. The home cannot be saved by all, but if you come to us soon enough, we're able to give those uh, housing counseling and loss mitigation assistance and work with your servicer to preserve your home ownership. I'm Larry Laws of First Home Alliance, and it's been my pleasure sharing with you our mission and highlighting people in our community that are making an impact. If you have questions about financial fitness or how we can help make your dream of home ownership a success, email your question to our inbox at help at firsthomealliance.org. Then tune into our next show to see if your question was shared or selected to be shared with our audience. You can easily get more information about our services by visiting our website at firsthomealliance.org. Thank you for watching today's segment of First Home Alliance and join us next time to rock your block. Glad to know that, you know, some of this stuff about like, I don't know, credit and buying houses is like written down somewhere. A lot of the times it's always hearsay, like other friends or family members who have bought houses before, but they can never, you know, tell you legit what you need to get done and do before buying a house. I definitely think this class should be required for all first home buyers because um, a lot of times the real estate agent doesn't explain the process to you. So I think this is very important. Uh, it's from the credit up to receiving a loan. And the most important thing is the process that you go through when you're buying the house. And there are a lot of process which you don't have idea about that before you take this class. The speakers who came up and spoke about each section, they were very knowledgeable in their field and I felt like they it was relatable. They didn't just throw out a whole bunch of terms that went over my head, but they really explained it in in a way to where I uh, understood it and I could even explain it to my children and it was even easier for me to take home and kind of remember and, and process and, and apply to my next steps. Um, the process was amazing. They start first with a class before even finding a lender or agent. I did all of that and I wasn't able to purchase and then I was like, oh, you know what, there's a lot of information I'm not aware of. I mean, just start from the beginning, to put everything on hold. Piecing the information together, because you've heard things from about the loans and about this and about the credit, but this is like a summary, and it just gives a clear flow of where to go with what you have and kind of building up a plan. So that kind of gives me a whole picture of where I needed to go and how to get there.